Let's add some reverb to these vocals that we can see in pink here. I'll go to the vocal channel, I'll click on the plus button at the top there, and I'm just going to insert one of my favorites, Room Reverb. I've got a preset set up for this. I'll go to that Avox there, and that's all ready to go. Let's have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand? And of course, we're hearing a mixture of the original vocal and the vocal with reverb. And we can control that mix down here with the global mix control. Yeah, so that all the way down is dry. It sounds like this. Was it the touch of my... And all the way up. Whoop, there you go. All the way up is super wet. Was it... And it goes on forever and ever. So... That on the face of it is fine, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine to insert a reverb like that and then just blend the two signals like so with that mix control. Now, the, one of the issues you have with reverb, I've talked about this on the channel before, but, but in case you missed it, is that the low end of it tends to get very muddy, especially when you have it on multiple tracks at the same time. So we, I always want to EQ my reverb, okay? Not the rest of the vocal, but just the reverb part of it. Okay, so let's just grab an EQ, go to the, go to the plus button there. Um, we'll insert Pro EQ here. And I'm just going to do a low cut, right? Just all the way like so. Yeah, that's typically what I would do. And I like to EQ going into the reverb. So let's just change the position of that EQ to just above the reverb and have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Uh oh, right away, we've got a problem. The whole vocal has been EQ'd. Yeah, we've lost all of the low end of the vocal because we're not able to EQ the reverb separately here because it's all in the same effects chain as inserts here. Okay, so that is not a great solution, which is why, and I'll just go ahead and remove those, which is why I would always or often use a bus for this. Okay, now I've got one set up already. And I'm going to do a send to this bus. I'll now switch that send on. Yeah, switch it on. It's called Vox Rev. And you can see it here. And indeed, you can see it's got an EQ and then a reverb. So what's happening here is we've got our reverb as we had it before. But only the sort of signal with the reverb is on this bus. Yeah, and we're able to EQ that. But we've still got the original signal which is continuing down through the chain here to the fader. So let's have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? So you can hear that the vocal's still intact there. And if I bring up the EQ, even if I do something fairly aggressive, yeah, like this, put it all up to the top, have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way? we still have our original vocal intact. And that is one of the reasons why I often use a bus. Okay, just one of the many reasons why I often use a bus. Now, there's another example of bus usage here, and that is with some parallel compression. You can see I've got another send here to something called Vox Comp. It's going through to this channel here. Yeah, which has got one uh, plugin in there. If we open that up, this is Fact Channel XT, and I'm using this 1176 style plugin here. It's got incredible, incredibly high ratio switched on. Yeah, um, it's got a fast attack, fast release, um, and the input's up high. It's it's just really compressing it very, very hard. Okay, now it would sound awful by itself, and I've made videos about this before, so you probably heard how awful it sounded, except for the fact that I'm actually blending it in with this fader down here. Yeah, so it's just very subtle and I've still got my original vocal intact. OK, so that's why it still sounds OK. Have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? And that parallel compression is just keeping it a little bit more present. Now, you will note with both of these sends that they have yellow controls and that's because they're set up as pre-fader sends, I've got this switched here. That means that they're not going to be affected, or that level is not going to be affected by this fader at the bottom, okay? Now, there's that's great because I want to maintain a good signal going through to these uh, effects in the, in the buses. However, there is an issue with it. As I turn the fader down to adjust the volume of the vocal, it sounds like this. Was it the touch of my head?
and you can see that although I have the fader all the way down, we can still hear the vocal because it is going through to those buses and we can still hear those buses. The faders have not gone. So we'd have to adjust all of the faders, which would be a bit of a pain. OK, but there are a couple of solutions to this. I'll show you quickly if we select um, all of them, for example, we could right click and do and you choose add VCA, right? So now we've got a VCA controller for all of those. And as I move up and down, you can see that all of the faders move up and down and they maintain their mix, their relationship with each other. So I can turn the vocal down with that. Was it the touch? That's one solution. Now, what if I wanted to, I'll undo that solution. What if I actually wanted to add some effects to all of these once they've been kind of summed together? Well, we could do that, select them all, right click, add a bus, yeah? And now I've got a bus that has the same function as the VCA had in the sense I can turn the whole thing down and up. Was it? However, I could now um, add some effects in there, EQ the whole thing. I, indeed, I could even send it off to another bus and do things there as well. So what we end up with for our vocals, let's just um, just name this here. We'll just call them Vox Main, okay? Let's actually color them a nice bright red. Ooh. What we end up with is four sort of channels all together to control just one vocal, okay? And, you know, this is not all of the things I normally do. I'd often have, you know, a delay in there and other things as well. So it can get quite complex in terms of your routing here, okay? So there must be a better way to do it, right? Hi folks, I'm Mike, and I hope you're well. Yes, there is an easier way, using something called Splitter. Splitter's been a part of Studio One for a while, but it's often overlooked. So we're gonna completely recreate all of the routing we had in that example by using Splitter. We'll run through how to do that, what some of the other useful features are in it, and also we'll talk about when not to use Splitter. Let's dive in by looking at the basics. So I'm gonna turn off the sends that we made earlier with this vocal, and I'm gonna open up just the first of our plugins here, which is the saturation plugin. It doesn't really matter which one I click on here, but just in case you didn't know, if you look at the top of this window, which is opened here, I can actually access all of the different plugins on that channel here by clicking on the tabs there. But what you may not have noticed is this little icon here. This is for routing. If we click on that, we can see all of our plugins sort of arranged in a linear fashion yeah, as we normally use them. This is one of the ways we can add the splitter plugin, okay? All I need to do at this point to add the splitter is just grab it from the top here and just drag it down onto this line, bang, and it's there. Now you can see in the actual channel now that with the splitter plugin has appeared there, okay? That's just one way, and we already had some existing plugins, yeah? If you didn't have any existing plugins and you just wanted to add splitter in there, just go up to insert, click on plus, and then you can just you know add the splitter plugin in the regular way. But this is just one way that we've done it here. So let's have a look at this and let's recreate everything that we had over here using splitter. So when I um, click on splitter here, you can see that there's something here called number of splits. Default is two, yeah? It just splits the signal in two, in two sort of routes there. I'm gonna change it to three, okay? Let's change that to three. I think the maximum is five from memory. Okay, so we've got one, two, three. The signal has now been split between those three. Now I wanna show you a, a few things about this in a moment, but first of all, let me just grab that um, compression uh, plugin that I was using earlier, and I'll just drop it into one of these, these uh, branches here. So I'm just gonna drag it across actually, so it's already set up and ready to go. Okay, so this is my parallel compression um, chain, yeah? So that's already in there. So that part of it's already done. We've got the signal coming down, doing that compression there, but also coming down through here, yeah? Maintaining the original signal and over here as well, all right? So we've already got our parallel compression on there. Now, remember that we 
had that turned down a little bit in the original mix. And you see over here, where is it? It's about minus 13 decibels. So we can actually do the same over here. There's a couple of ways we can do it. We can click on the splitter um, plug in here and we can adjust the level of it up here. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Or we can um, go down here and there's a fader for it there. Minus 11 or so, wasn't it? Yeah, that's fine. Or minus 13. There you go. We get it roughly the same just so we get a similar result. Okay, so that's the effect. That's just like having the fader on the end of a channel, right? Now we can also mute. We can do that up here again. We can just click on mute or we can do it here. We can just break or connect the little branch over here. Okay, so I like to do it there because you don't have to keep going to the splitter plugin itself to sort of keep doing those things. All right, so there we have that set up already. Very, very easy, right? Let's just do the same with the reverb. So I'm just going to grab um, the Pro EQ. I'm going to pop it over there. Remember, this is the EQ I had before the reverb, and I'll grab the reverb itself. I'll pop that in after the Pro EQ. So now we have everything that we had before, okay? We have the compression we have the original signal going to, through the middle here and then we have the reverb with the eq before it now one thing i want to, you to note here is that the eq the reverb bus was originally set up to full you can see it here yeah um let's go back to our splitter now in fact i'll pin it there um now, we are not controlling the level of the reverb, however, with the output originally. We were doing it with the input, with the send level. You can see that over here, yeah? It's set at minus 19. But we have no send level here, okay? So we can't get exactly the same effect. And it does make a difference whether you do this before or after to the sound. So what I'm going to do, just to get over that, is add a new plugin here. I'm going to go to inserts here. Um, and I'm going to go for handy old mix tool. Okay, it's appeared down here. I'm just going to grab it and pop it up there. And I'm going to sort of replicate what I was doing over here. Yeah, I was doing a send of minus 19. If I click on this mix tool plugin, um, in fact, I'll open it up, then you can see that I can adjust the gain here. But if I just click on it, you can see I can actually adjust the gain over here. I don't actually have to open the whole plugin here. We get access. So a lot of these plugins just on the left hand side here. So what was that? Uh, oh, I can't remember. What was it? Minus 19, wasn't it? Yeah, there we go. Minus 19. Also, that's fine. So that's it. We've actually replicated everything that we did over here is, is now replicated over here. Now we may have to adjust the overall volume a little bit. We'll look at that in a moment. But I can essentially go ahead. I can delete this. I'll just remove that. Um, that end bus we had there. These two are both useless now. So I'll just remove them, remove them. Yeah, the sends are going nowhere. And let's have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand to... And that's the basic usage of, uh, of our splitter. Okay, let's open it up again. I just want to mention a few things. So we've just done a very basic split, three splits there. We, you know, the default is two. Don't forget, you can just go crazy with this. You can grab the splitter. You can pop it in, in different places. Yes, yeah? so you could do parallel processing at different places. You could actually uh, put a splitter on a splitter. Um, you could <laughs> put a splitter on a splitter on a splitter. I'm not sure exactly why you would do those things, but just so you know, it is there. Now, if we click on the splitter, we can see that we're in normal mode at the moment, but there's another couple of modes I want to discuss. So I've inserted a splitter at the end of this chain on my vocal here, but this time I'm going to switch over to a channel split, okay? Now, what a channel split does is it just allows you to separately process the left and right channels, okay? Now, let's just insert a reverb here, and I'll just grab it, pop it in there. I'm just going to pop it over on the right-hand channel. I'm going to play this, but you're not going to get what you expect. Was it the touch of my hand? It's not on the right hand side. And that is because this is a mono track, okay, at the moment. Of course, it's a vocal recorded with one mic. So you're only going to get that sort of 
mono signal. But you can process this in a stereo way by going up to the track up here and you see where this little circle is. Just click on that. It's going to change to two little circles. And now we can do stereo processing. And if we play our track now, you will hear that the reverb will just be on one side. Was it the touch of my hand? And we can drag it over to the other side as well. Was it the touch of my hand? Of course, there's all kinds of applications for this. I'm just using this reverb so you can clearly hear what's going on. So that is what our channel mode is for. <laughs> so another way we can split our signal is according to frequency. Let's switch this splitter over to a frequency split. Yeah, we've still got two channels as we did before, and we've still got our reverb on one of those channels. And now we have this control. This is a frequency selector. Essentially, everything um, that, that is in this area in the lower frequencies before this split point, yeah, is going to be processed on this side of the branch, yeah and then everything on the other side. So if we pop this all the way up high, and what you're going to hear is reverb, but only on the higher frequencies. Was it the touch of my hand? Yeah, and if I were to uh, grab this reverb and pop it over to the other side, in fact, let's now change that frequency all the way down to the lower end, yeah, then all you're going to hear is reverb in the very low frequencies. Was it the touch of my hand? Was it the way that I stand too close? Yeah, just very, very handy indeed. You don't have to just have two frequencies. You could, again, have more. So I could um, change this to three for my splits here. Yeah, and then I get a couple of different ways to control it. Um, in this way, I can actually create different sort of, you know, various sort of bands. Now, have a listen to this as I drag this reverb around. I'll pop this one all up to the top, keep this one down low, have a listen. Was it the touch of my hand? Yeah, I think it's down pretty low then, move it to the middle. Was it the touch of my hand? It's all happening in those middle frequencies, move it up here. Was it the touch of my hand? It's all happening in those higher frequencies. You could actually go about building, you know, a, a multi-band compressor. Why would you do that? We've already got a perfectly awesome multi-band compressor in studio one but yeah it's the power of this is absolutely incredible <laughs> so this begs the question do we even need buses anymore if splitters are so good why would we ever use a bus well there's actually loads of reasons to use buses especially for summing things together so for example i've got these three guitars here which i want to keep in balance with each other so i've got them all going through to this bus over here I can solo them and have a listen and I can turn them up and down all together so you know I don't view that reason for a bus as going away anytime soon but what about when you do want to add effects to something shouldn't you just use the splitter all the time now well no not necessarily at all because there's often situations especially with effects like reverb where we don't want to have an individual reverb effect on lots of different things. So for example, here I've got the my main vocal, but there's actually four harmony vocals. Okay, you can see them all in pink here. Okay, if they all had a separate um, splitter with a separate reverb plugin on them, if I wanted to sort of adjust it from a large room to a small room, I'd have to go and adjust them all. And they're all using processing power, um, you know, using up CPU, just, it's just not a very efficient way to work. So there's still a really good reason to have a bus. So I've actually got all of these vocals being sent through to my original uh, reverb bus. So split is really good when you know you're going to do some parallel style processing and you're only going to be doing it on that one particular track and you can avoid adding many extra buses which add to the complexity. You know, we discussed briefly parallel compression in this video. If you don't know about it, it's one of the easiest forms of compression to get going with if you're a beginner. And it's incredibly effective, especially on things like vocals. If you'd like to find out about that in much more depth, watch this video, which I made just here.